time for another Affinity Photo tutorial. Today's tutorial is going to be showing how to create a perspective reflection as opposed to a perspective shadow. This is this one took a little while to figure out, but I think it will be worthwhile. Unfortunately, we don't have the same tools that uh, Photoshop has with its perspective and warping. They kind of work together. We're going to have to work around it. So let's get started and uh, let's get rid of everything we have here just so we can start from scratch. So we're basically just starting off. I created a background, uh, make it look like a floor plane and a wall. And I do have an image of a car that I already had cut out for purposes. So here it is, we're starting off with this car. So normally when we do any kind of a reflection, what we'll do is we'll duplicate the layer, Command J, and then we will go ahead and flip it vertically. All right, we'll put that behind the regular layer and then we'll move it down. So you'll notice when we move it down, it just doesn't look right. And no matter how we angle that, there's really no way to make that look like a real reflection. So what we're going to do is do a little bit of a trick here. And just for purposes right now, I'm going to move this up just a little bit. Move this up just a little bit. So we know that we have the perspective tool, right, over here on our... Uh, now with our perspective tool, we can start doing this. And again, we're, we're really not getting the effect that we want. So we're going to cancel that out. Nice thing about this perspective tool is that if you look at your selections here, you have planes, we have a single plane, or we have a dual plane, which kind of cuts it down the middle and gives us two point perspective. For the purposes here, we need to also turn off auto clip so it doesn't go out of its frame. And then from here, we're going to start kind of eyeballing this into place. We'll bring this up here. So we've got this kind of vanishing off and there's a little bit of a bug here. It seems like, I don't know why Affinity Photo does this. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second here, even though we are uh, moving these the way we want and we turned auto clip off, it is giving us a little bit of an error there. It's not really showing the proper bounding box for it, but we're going to get it close because this is just to rough it out. So once we have it kind of where we think it looks reasonably in perspective, we'll go ahead and hit apply. And you'll see once we hit apply, everything comes back. So that looks pretty distorted like that. So the next thing we're going to do is change from our perspective tool over to a mesh warp tool. And this gives us four corners to start with. What we're going to do is we're going to put in some divisions here. So we're going to put in a division here, maybe a division here for right now, and we'll start working this and see what happens. So we'll bring this up here, and you can see how this is very sensitive. And as you're going along at any time, you can come up here and hide the mesh to see what you're getting. And this just takes a little bit of trial and error at this point, especially when you're trying to match up the wheels, and it's by no means accurate. You know, we've got certain lines that we can follow here, like on the bumper, that we need to kind of keep reasonably close. So I'm going to kind of speed this up just a little bit for you, but you can see what you're doing here. Let me put another division here. Okay, so once we've got it close, we're going to go ahead and apply that. And granted, it doesn't look perfect, but we have still some massaging to do here. First thing we do is we'll take this and drag it down. Let's get below our floor plane here. Get it a little bit closer there. Next thing we want to do to this layer is add a Gaussian blur. And that will help quite a bit in selling it. Also, we have no shadow underneath the car. So what we'll do here is uh, we'll add in a layer, pixel layer here. We'll come over to our pen tool and we'll just kind of draw out the outline of the shape that we'd like to use for our underbody shadow. We'll go ahead and fill that with black. And we can also apply Gaussian Blur to that as well. We'll come over to this thing. We can probably scrunch it down a little bit here. And then the very last thing we're going to do is apply a mask to it and we will feather out that reflection some so it's not quite so prominent. And this really goes the longest way into 
making it look realistic. And again, you can spend as much time on this as you need, because again, if we look over here, we didn't get the wheel completely straight. But for the purposes of what we're doing, this is a quick, easy way to uh, create a semi-realistic perspective shadow. And you know, if you're making an ad, you could throw in your text over here. Anyway, that was a really quick one. I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button or think about subscribing to see more tutorials like this. I really appreciate you watching. Peace. Talk to you later. Bye.